three pillars of health system. 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 Welcome to the Ultimate You Podcast. Design your dream lifestyle with Andy Anderson's three pillars of health system. You can achieve anything with the right psychology, nutrition, and body. Okay, guys, so today we've got a very, very special guest. He's a million-dollar investor, speaker, entrepreneur, and a million-dollar mindset coach. So make sure you listen very carefully because you just could get rich off this podcast. Just trying to help you out here, all right? We've got Pat Mazzidi on the line. How are you, my friend? Eddie, I'm fantastic, mate, and uh, thanks for having me on the program. Let's see if we can help a few people get to another level. Exactly right, and that's the thing, mate. All our viewers, they're people that they want it all, okay? These are fit, healthy people. They love self-development, and they love uh, success. They want to get rich as well. So we want to share, uh, I want you to share some of your wisdom and uh, see if it can rub off onto us, and, and we can gain some awesome stuff. Love to, you know, Andy, that, 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 it, you know, it's amazing how people can make wrong decisions in that area because I, I think health and wealth are two of the most vital things and probably out a third would be your relationships. They're the three fundamentals of life and if you get those three right, you're doing great. I tell people, look, no point being rich and sick and dead and someone else lives off your, off your money. <laughs> exactly right, exactly right, so true. So let's combine our knowledge, my friend, and, uh, and give it to Absolutely. them. Awesome. So, Pat, tell us a little bit about your history and how you became a you know a wealth acceleration coach and million dollar investor. Look, I I, um, I grew up with two alcoholic parents and uh, had a very very tough upbringing. Um, and uh, and uh, but by the time I was teenager, just started working with youth in a in a local church and built probably Australia's largest youth organisation called Youth Alive. Uh, then uh, I developed a, a drug rehabilitation centre which I took out of bankruptcy. And uh, funnily enough, when I went on this uh, board of this drug rehabilitation center, they said to me, oh, the reason why we're going bankrupt is we can't find enough drug addicts to fill this facility. And it was a 30-bed facility in New South Wales. I said, you can't find 30 drug addicts in Sydney? I can find 30 in my street, you know. Like, and uh, so I took that on, took it out of bankruptcy, um, cleared $276,000 of debt in three months. And then uh, just started doing the motivational scene and, and, and speaking scene and was involved a lot of my, in, in my church and then had a – very painful divorce and took a two-year hiatus and a bit of a break and then just started working with people on their mindset and, um, you know, just took principles of prosperity that have always through my whole life um, stood me in good stead and, you know, never had a bankruptcy, never had a default, nothing like that, just basic principles that if we apply them, they – they can lead to great abundance, uh, and, and I like saying money because it really gets gets to people because it's a bit of front end, you know. But uh, yeah, some people use the ethical oh, wealth, and again, okay, no, no. Let, let's talk about cash, and let's let's deal with that. I'm not saying that you know the other th- things aren't important, but let's get real. We all want to prosper financially, so let's not be afraid of using the word money. Yeah. So, so true. That's Excellent, amazing story. So you've witnessed a lot of people. You've I transform people's bodies, you transform their bank accounts. Now, you, you've seen some amazing transformations in your, uh, with, your, with your clients and whatnot. Can you tell us one of the, the greatest transformations you've seen to date? Look, I, I could, just one guy that came to me and he's $27 million in the hole as a property developer. Uh, you know, just recently made his first two point, two point something million net profit. Now, here's the thing. It didn't happen overnight, but it did happen. You see, most of our bad financial advice, bad financial results are a result of bad financial advice. And that's just the same with health. You know, people get the wrong advice and then they wonder why they're not healthy or why they're not fit. You know, well, they're getting bad advice. And so this guy was constantly getting bad advice and trying to make money fast. I was recently asked, how do you create wealth? quick and I said very slowly because you like you can't have 30 years of bad financial habits and expect it to change overnight like you can't have 20 years or 10 years or five years of bad eating and bang oh, oh you know I, I want I want to have six pack you know rip body in a month I might take a little longer than that you know but what, what's interesting Andy is, is some of the boys that came to my drug rehab center at that time a lot of these young guys now are self-made businessmen and going really great, you know. Uh, some of them wouldn't call them millionaires, but they're pretty well on their way. And the transformation happened from the inside out. Of course, so true. And we try to teach all our uh, 
all our viewers that continuously, even with their health, fitness, no matter what it is, it, it all starts up here, doesn't it? So I Absolutely. agree completely. Well, on on that topic, what are the most important characteristics of a, a wealth mindset or a millionaire mindset? I think the first thing is very important is to be inquisitive. Ask questions. Why why are you doing that? How are you succeeding? How did you succeed? Where did you invest? How did you invest? Inquisitiveness is a very important characteristic. You know, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but imbeciles are really amazed at what they don't know. <laughs> they, they, they brag, you know, they advertise their ignorance. And really, I find you just don't want, you, you don't want to be one of those people. So, so inquisitiveness is, is very important. I think the other thing is to be open to learn. Be open to learn and be open to unlearn what you already know. Because a lot of times what we know stops us from knowing. I think the third important factor, which is a vitally important, is work on your personal development. Your income won't grow any bigger than you are. Uh, look, I just toured with Mike Tyson last year, and interestingly, Tyson blew 400 million bucks. Uh, but, but wait, he's still not being real with himself because he's just now said, oh, by the way, I haven't been sober all this time. I've been lying about it, you know. So the mindset is just not right, you know, and, and that will continue to sabotage his life unless he deals with it. Same with us. We've got to grow as people. We've got to deal with our CRAP and have what I call I shall not kid myself any more day because that's when you get real. That's when your life changes. Like your health direction, your financial direction can change in an instant through a decision. The destination takes some time, and that's one of the things is change your direction and then give your destination time. Mm. Great advice. Great advice, Pat. So how important are mentors, you know, social interaction and networking to becoming wealthy and successful? Vitally important. Um, one of the things, I just wrote an article called um, The Vital Friends You Need. Uh, there's a brilliant book on it, by the way, called Vital Friends. Um, but, but they found that in homelessness, when a person was homeless, the one thing they didn't do is have one friend that they could rely upon. But same with wealth. Here's what you need. Number one, you need a champion that will champion your cause. Someone that's, that'll say, hey, Andy Anderson's a great guy. You want to get involved with, you know, ultimateyou.com, fantastic program. You need someone to champion your cause. Number two, you need a navigator, someone to steer you around the difficult times in life. Number three, you need a mentor in a specific area. If I want to mentor how to reshape my body, I'll come to you, all right? I say to people, don't go to someone, but don't go to a mechanic unless he's a multi-millionaire, to be a millionaire, you know, thinker coach. You don't want to do that. You want to create wealth, create a wealthy mindset, create an abundant lifestyle, create cash in the bank, come to me. I know how to do that. So you've got to get that kind of mentor. But the other thing is also we need a corrector in our lives, someone that will, will speak in your life and go, you know, you really need to pull your head in over here. You really need to change this because, you know, we don't learn anything in the good times. We learn most things in the bad times. It's like with health. People generally don't come to, for help until it's too late or until like, they hit this major wall. And I think we need those navigators. We need the right associations. We need the champion. We need the mentors. We need at least these kind of people in our lives. I, I, there's about eight that I've, I, I can pick up. But, you know, one person can be three or four of them. But I don't think one person can be all of them. Yeah, so true, so true. Great. And how did you first come into contact with, you know, your, your mentors and and people that you've uh, learnt off, I guess, over the years. You know, Andy, I went to the seminars. You know, like I, I encourage even your viewers out there, look, you know, if they go online to our, to our program, uh, onto our www.mesiti.com, www.mesiti.com, there's stuff there that they can access, knowledge and free downloads and free videos and free stuff. And that's, for me, in, in the early days, we didn't have the technology we have now where I could download stuff free. I had to buy it all. And so I would go to a, a seminar or to a, a church meeting or to a business group and I'd, I'd buy the guy's CD and I'd buy his books and that would give me access into their lives because I'd say, hey, uh, Mr. Sunshine, I bought your CDs and uh, could I do an interview? Could I take you out for lunch? Could I pay you to have lunch with me? You know, And they were like, you want to pay me to have lunch? Yeah, and you choose your restaurant. And, and creating an environment where they were comfortable and, 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 and that – created a, an association with my mentors. Look, you never learn from the seminar you attend. You never learn from the book you don't read. You never learn from the CD you don't have. You never learn from the podcast. All of these things give us access to mentorship. And, and so many people can discard it 
because it's either free or online, but that's where it starts, you know? That's where it starts. Like, if you don't invest in yourself like I did, why would a mentor want to invest in you? True. Yeah, very, very true. I completely agree with that. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about some of the books that you've written. I want to start with Pathways to Prosperity. Okay, it's an yep. awesome book. Now, what does that differ from a lot of the self-help books out there? Because I wrote it. Because <laughs> I wrote it. That's it. But, but that's the key. It's my perspective of life. Like, what's the difference between you and every other catch out there? I mean, because you're it. You're the product. You know, we, we want to follow Andy, you know, and, and that's the primary thing. The, the other thing is, look, I, I won't teach anybody anything I haven't done myself. And, and here's where I get concerned a little bit with some of these self-help guys. Uh, some of these help, self-help guys need a lot of self-help themselves. Uh, and n- n- no one's perfect. We've all got our, 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 our dark spots, you know. But I think Pathways gives you a practical one, two, three, four, five – because it's based on the premise of the yellow brick road, you know. Um, how do I get to the Emerald City? Follow the yellow brick road. And it's a simple step-by-step. In that book, I don't talk about financial strategy because strategy isn't important. It's the driver of the strategy that's important. And when it comes to wealth, I can give it someone a great business idea or a great strategy like, for example, property or internet or whatever. But if I've got a bad driver, they're going to have an accident, you know. And it's like with health. You can teach the same thing to two two people. One will apply it. The other one goes, oh, it doesn't work, Andy. But what's the difference is that it's the person that's responding to your education. So we really give a step-by-step uh, guide. And it's it's basically stuff that I've worked out my own life, worked out through my clients' lives, and it works. Yeah, great. And you talk about the 12 steps to creating wealth in this book, which is really, really intriguing to me, and I love it. And what are the most crucial steps out of these 12, do you think, to creating that success for people? Look, I think the first thing is admit you need help. Admit you need help. Number two, if you've got financial problems, be willing to turn them over to someone who's got a bit more nous than you do. You know, Be willing to be accountable. I think thirdly, have a long-term plan. Because most people want to get rich quick, and I, I, I shudder at the amount of people that I've met who got into some get-rich-quick scheme and lost their shirt off their back. So, look, if you want to get rich quick, let me tell you how to do it slowly. <laughs> That's how you do it. I think the next important is learn how to cancel debt. Now, I'm talking about financial debt, but also emotional debt. A lot of people carry around a lot of emotional debt. And if they think that doesn't affect them financially, they're kidding themselves. Fears, worry, stress, all this stuff, you know. I think also is one of the vital things is working out what your money personality is. Are you one of these people that you do something, you've got to reward yourself, or as soon as you get a pay packet, you've got to spend it, or, you know, you, 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 you know, you, you get your pay packet, you go with your mates in the pub, oh, free drinks, yeah, yeah. Well, what are you going to do the rest of the month, you know? Like, what's your money personality like? Because we've got to fix that. They're some of the vital points of it. Excellent. So maybe we could just delve into money personality a little bit more. And because mm. uh, I know when you just said that about, you know, people, they get their paycheck and they're off to the pub. And, you know, I see so many people like that. And I, I'm sure you do as well. How do you start to fix something like that that I guess it's been ingrained or you're, you're so used to over 10, 20 years? Well, I think, number one, you've got to be aware of it. You've got to be aware of it. Number two, like I said, you've got to have a I will not kid myself any more day. Like, like let, let, let's get real. I think thirdly is watch your associations because who you hang around with is going to determine your level of income. You know, it's, it's just, it's, I'll use an example. People get their pay packet, you know, whatever they get their pay packet, and they think, oh, yeah, Friday night, go out to the club with me mates, you know. So they're, you know, down on a few. And by, before you know it, they spent two, three hundred bucks they're trying to pick someone up or trying to big note themselves and, and next week they go, geez, I, I got more month left than I got money. I'm in deep yoga here, you know. Well, maybe if you had a bit more discipline in your life, and, and, and I'm no killjoy, trust me, you know, but if you had some discipline in your life in those areas, you wouldn't be in that financial hole. So, you know, what is your money story? Are you one of these people that feels like money story can be also like a real tight ass, you know, like, 
I don't know if I'm allowed to use that word on the program, but, you know, am I allowed? No. But, like, like, say someone goes, oh, Pat, if I had more money, I'd be more generous. I go, no, you're not. If you're a tight ass with a $1,000, you're a tight ass with a million dollars, you just got a bigger ass but the same hole. <laughs> you know, so, and that, that's the other extreme. You know, like, you've got the spendy thrift, then you've got the tight one. Then you've got other people who are like, they're always saving up for a rainy day, and sure enough, they have a thunderstorm. You know, and, and they never enjoy the now. The key is to allocate money. Allocate money. Allocate, firstly, to yourself. Allocate, you know, you don't allocate to your bills first. You pay yourself first. You invest second. Then you live off the rest third because that's where we get it wrong. We've got to go from uh, from a I earn money to invest to I'm an investor that earns money. Yeah, yeah, great. And, you know, you know? Mm, mm. Yeah, big mindset shift there. Natalie, Natalie, I've seen you talk, you, you're a big believer in giving, and I've seen you talk on, you know, a lot of TV shows about this as well. And I, yeah. I'm wondering, you know, how does giving help you become mm. rich and successful? I'd love to hear about it. I'm sure everyone else well, as well. It, it, it's, the old, it's the old law of sowing and reaping. You know, we reap what we sow. And I say, whatever you want in life, give it away. You want, lo- you want love? Be a loving person. You, you want friends? Be friendly. You want money? Give away money. I allocate 10% of my income minimum. People say, why? Look, I don't know how it works. I just know that it does. Um, the other day, um, I was driving down a road up in Brisbane and um, they were trying to raise money for operations for blind people. And it's like the whole Brisbane Gold Coast area on a particular radio station was trying to raise 100 sponsorships at 32 bucks, which is $3,200. I'm going, let me get, I can get 100 people operations to see for 3,200 bucks. I rang him up and said, mate, I'll sponsor 100 right here and now. And then my, a couple of my friends, and they're not very wealthy people, they were just heard me do it. They said, oh, we'll, we'll do 10, we'll do 20. And, and all of a sudden we end up with 264 operations for blind people. 30, yeah. There's 264 people that couldn't see before. You know, I know that's going to come back to me. If we just If we just stop trying to figure it out and just trust the process, it'll work. Like when I turn the tap on, on you know, in, in, in my home, I'm not trying to look at where's this come from. Let me get under the, the let me get under the house here, see where this water. Goes. I just know, turn the tap on, water comes out, you know. And that's how giving is, you know. And I think you know, the old saying is more blessed to give than it is to receive. If you give, you can't help receive. That's a law of life. And um, and I strongly want to encourage people. People say I can't afford it. I say you can't afford not to. And if you can't afford it, then simplify your life. Awesome advice. Awesome advice. I hope everyone's listening to that and maybe they can start picking a charity or, or not even. They can start off smaller, like you said, just you know, giving yeah. a smile, giving emotion, just showing some kindness as well. It's yeah. all it's all Totally. And, and and like I said, whatever you want. You want money, give it away. You know, just give something now now be careful where you give because you know, you, you want to make sure your money's going to the right source. You know, and and but but be a giver. Look, there's never been a monument erected to a tight ass unless the tight ass built it himself. <laughs> the one million reasons to change your mind. Okay, yes. again, another amazing book book that you've written, and you've talked about. Uh, mind viruses, okay, and I love this, and I love the mind virus. I don't actually love it, but I I, I love figuring it out about the yeah. uh, the Aussie battler concept, yeah. which is just <laughs> ingrained in all of us, obviously. So, totally. can you break it down for us, and uh, and let's overcome this right now? Well, well, most people go, look, I'm just an average Aussie battler, and then you get governments enforcing it. Well, quite frankly, let me be honest with you, I know people do it tough, but what a lot of people mean is, is I just want a handout. I just want to now if you're doing look, I believe we should help people that can't work. But we shouldn't be supporting people that won't work. That just it's bad. And unfortunately, you know, you got people out there, and I don't want to be offensive, but but I'm gonna call it a spade a spade. They're dull bludgers, they're pumping out the kids because they get out, you know, they get more money, they don't have to work. They're living off this and then they and they're lazy ass sitting on their lounge. 
They can't af- they can't afford to feed their kids, but they can go to Cinebet, TAB, buy smokes, and buy grog and beer, and go to the footy. You're not a battler. You know what you are is a liar. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, the moment see what we've done in Australia, and, and get, look, I help. We help the needy and the poor every 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 week. But they're genuine. If they're genuine, if you're lying or you're lazy, you know, you know, I can't find a job. How long you've been unemployed? Oh, 12 months. Hang on a minute. You mean to tell me you spent eight hours a day looking for a job, 365 days a year. We'll give you, we'll even give you two weeks off for Christmas. So you've had like 350 days and you spent eight hours a day looking for a job and you can't find one. Mate, mate, I've got the opera house I'm trying to sell you. <laughs> Like, it, it, it's it's not true. We've got an oh, I owed mentality in this country, and the and it kills entrepreneurialism. You, you want to get you want to get, and you know what? People like our pensioners are suffering. People that have put their life into this nation, our war veterans, our farmers that are doing it tough out there. That we should that are the backbone to our culture because we're siphoning money that rightfully belongs to them, and that's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. You know, if you're a young person, you're an adult, work for the adult. You know, and I, I know I'm, I'm a bit, you know, uh, tally on this, but, but the battler mentality is crippling us. We should be looking after our pensioners. These old people, they can't even want to turn their heater on. You know, we should be looking after our war veterans, our farmers out there that are the backbone of this country, you know, and rather than people that just are lazy and don't want to work, you know, like... We should be looking after our disabled uh, people and stuff. These are genuine battlers. You know what I mean? And they're not someone that just doesn't want to work, or you know, or, you know, oh yeah, yeah. I got I got my paycheck and I went and spent it on my mag wheels. You know? Mm, yeah, exactly. And look, and I've talked to Jamie McIntyre about this as well, and he obviously shares the sh- uh, same views. But how do we change this? How do we how do we change this mentality? It's a process. We need people like myself and other guys really ringing this bell. We need, you know, podcasts like this, Andy, getting out there to people. Um, we need to readdress this culture. We need to tell our politicians to stop this kind of language. I'll give you another example, okay? I'll give you another example that we use. Recreational drugs, which is harm minimization. What a crock of shit. I mean, sorry, but, but w- w- when is... When is a drug like marijuana or, or, or cocaine or, or blow or any of that stuff, when does that become a recruit? When does that become a party thing? I've lived on the other side of that, picking up the messes, and the language creates a mindset. So we've got to address the language first because they're not party. Drugs don't make you cool. Drugs don't make you popular. Drugs make you dead. Let me spell it for you. De, air, de. Get it through your thick head, you know, putting stuff up your nose, sticking a needle in your arm. That's not a party and it's not recreational. And language is a big part of it, Andy. You know, these, these are my little soapboxes, but, um, yeah. But language is a big part of it. Language is a big part of it. So true. Well, let's, let's move on to a bit of a different topic now, a bit of a light, light-hearted topic. <laughs> now we're going all serious. But uh, let's talk about some of the advice that you've gotten off mentors, okay, that's really helped you create the amazing success that you have. What's, what's a, some advice that you've had that's stuck with you all these years? The late, great Jim Rowan was a great mentor to me. And uh, Jim Rowan would say, if you work on, hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you'll make a fortune, son. That was a big one. I think the second thing that stood me in good stead is never blame anybody. Don't blame. No matter what happens in life, even if there is some justification, don't do it because I've never met a rich victim. You know. I think the third thing is you've got to realize that yesterday ended last night and you've got to constantly realize that this is a brand new day. Uh, just like God's mercy is new every day, we've got a brand new day, a brand new start. You had a failure yesterday, pick yourself up, move yourself on. Don't, don't, don't go looking back if you want to go forward. And these are very important parts. I think the fourth thing is watch your associations. Watch out who you hang around with. You know, the people around, what gets around, what surrounds you, Andy, gets inside of you. Like you look at my office, I've got shelves of books in here, you know, because I want, and people go, oh, do you read all those books? I go, no, nah, I just feel smarter walking in here. <laughs> and, uh, 
and those things are of vital importance. I, I, I often also, I bought one of the greatest things for me is that someone once said to me, nothing happens till the sale is made. Like everybody is in the business of selling. Selling is one of the greatest things we could do. What is selling? It's the exchange of, of knowledge. It's, it's, I make an investment for a return of some sort. That's all selling is. And selling is the greatest thing that we could do. All business, all of life revolves around buying and selling. Never be afraid of a sale. Never be afraid of a salesman. Never be afraid of being a seller. Why? It's the greatest gift we can give people. Amazing. Great advice. Great advice. Who are some of the, the people that uh, you really look up to now or some of the, the latest books that you've been reading that sort of have inspired you? Look, I've just been reading a book called uh, by Garrett Gunderson called uh, Killing Sacred Cows. Great book. I really enjoy it. Um, I've just been reading a book called The Five Languages of Love for Children. Um, just, you know, how kids talk and how kids feel love is very important if we want to raise a new generation of people. I'm, I'm look, I'm looking at, you know, up here on my shelf, you know, I've got Maximum Achievement by Brian Tracy, uh, Good to Great. Um, there's a great book up there called, uh, Attitudes and Altitudes by a guy called Pat Mercedi. That's a real good book. I really enjoyed that. Funny. Yeah, it was really funny. I read some of my books and I go, man, that's really good. <laughs> Cause you forget. Well, you forget what you're right. Like some of my books are five, six years old, and I go back. I go, man, that's really good, you know. Um, I, I, I should take my own advice on that one, you know. Um, I, wrote, I wrote a book on relationships called How to Stay Together Without Killing Somebody, and I signed it for someone. I said, look, this is good advice. It didn't work for me. Hopefully, it'll work for you. <laughs> uh, but look, um, um, there's a uh, there's a great book I've just read called Money, God, and Greed. Really good book about. What the good book says about money and, and about capitalism and entrepreneurialism. It's a brilliant book. Awesome. So, look, what's, uh, what's a piece of advice, one piece of advice that you'd love to give the ultimate you warriors out there that could possibly change their lives? Uh, go online and get some of my stuff for free. That's what I'd tell them. But uh, get free content. Get free content. But, um, but, but, but and, and, you know, honestly, I think one of the greatest pieces of advice is watch your associations. And work on yourself. Just work on yourself. And how do I be a better person? How do I be a bigger person? Someone does me wrong. I don't have to react. I just walk the bigger road, you know. Uh, look, I, I, and I know some people might find this a bit, I don't know, on the edge, but I've got a little seven-year-old daughter and, you know, they've got a few bullies at school. She's not being bullied, but, but I'm teaching her how to look after herself. And I said, Sophia, I never want to hear that you started a fight. If I do, daddy's going to discipline you. But I will teach you how to end one. Uh, but if I ever know, but, but you must defend your friends. You must defend the kids that are simple kids at school, the ones that the kids pick on. You must defend, and I said, because you've got to be a bigger person, but you must never be reactive. You must be more proactive. And, uh, and just, you know, and I think having self-defense mechanisms in our heart, Andy, that if someone hurts you, you don't have to react. You don't have to be, you know, if someone's nasty, you don't have to be nasty back. But just remember, you don't have to react, but you're not a doormat either. And that's growing yourself on the inside. Um, you know, watch your associations and grow yourself. These two are two of the most vital things of life. Look, if I hang around you, I'm going to get healthy by default. You just can't, you know. You hang around me, you're going to get wealthy. And so people, just stick around long enough and you'll see, you know. And, and that's the key, it, which is the third one, is longevity in something. There's no quick fix. There is none. You just got to work at it. And that's my advice to everybody out there. Oh, look, um, we're about to start a big property tour in Brisbane this week, and then we've got another one in. Where are you based, Andy, by the way? Uh, we're in Melbourne. Oh, Melbourne. I've got a property tour in Brisbane this weekend. Uh, got the greatest lineup of property educators. Then we've got that in Perth. Uh, going to go to Fiji for a four day break. Got to work on my tan, you know. But, uh, yeah, uh, then I'm, um, I've got, uh, I've got a, a tour in New Zealand that I'm doing, and then I've got to uh, back to Perth again. And I uh, look forward to seeing people out there. And uh, look, I know that I know your your uh, your your herds all over the country. So we'd love to hear from them, and whether in Perth or Brisbane, and happy to give them gifts and tickets and things to help them grow their wealth. Because after all, if you give, it comes back to you. So we're doing that at the moment. And then um, 
um, uh, planning a, a big pathways to prosperity retreat where we bring people in for two and a half days and we just work on them, just me and them, two and a half days, five star resort, working on their mindset. Great, Pat. So what, what have you got coming up over, you know, the next weeks and, and, and the uh, next month? Mate, I've got a big property tour coming up in Brisbane and in Perth. And uh, then having a few days break in uh, Fiji for a while. Uh, then we've got a massive uh, event called Pathways to Prosperity on a five-star resort. Got to do it right. And uh, it's been two and a half days, me coaching people on wealth and wealth mindset and uh, and also giving them an opportunity with some practical stuff on how to make some good cash flow. Um, going over to New Zealand, speaking over there, uh, basically just enjoying life, you know, and doing what I do, which is helping people build their prosperity. Love it, Pat. Love it. Well, look, I know we got so much value out of this conversation today, and I'm sure you're going to be seeing a lot of the uh, the Ultimate You audience and warriors coming to your seminars from now on. So I just want to say a big thank you, and um, I hope we can uh, have a chat soon. Love to, Andy. You're a great guy, and thank you, mate. You're looking sharp. Thanks for all your donations.